Hello fellow learners, I welcome you to another clip which is on singular value decomposition and it is stem as what SVD. My name is Isaac Amanda to you with too. Let's dive into it. When we have a matrix A which is of the size N by M, we can factorize the matrix into what U, S and V transpose of which our u is an m by m orthogonal matrix and our v is n by n orthonormal orthogonal matrix as well and our x takes the same size as the our our original matrix for a that's n by m of which we have non zero elements along the diagonals so we, this one works with the assumption that our m is greater or equal to what n Before we look at it, if a simple example and a similar value decomposition, let's look at some properties. So the first property is that okay, we to factorize our a for us to be able to get our a, the factorization or the decomposition, we need to play around this matrix a transpose a and then a a transpose and these are the uh, properties that we need to consider. We said the matrix A, A, A transpose A, and then this very matrix A, A transpose are symmetric and their adjunct values are real and non negative. And then it's also what? Non zero as well. So permit me to bore you with a simple proof of what we mean by this matrix as symmetric. So first of all, we only consider this one, this matrix A transpose A, and then you can try the A, A transpose yourself. You will see that it works. So we say a matrix is symmetric if uh, the transpose of the matrix gives, gives us back that same matrix. So we have A transpose A, and the transpose of the same matrix is what we have here. So we can express this one, this term, middle term as this, that's the expansion form of it. And from here we have A transpose, which gives us our A transpose that we have here. And A transpose transpose will give us what? Back to our original A, that's what two. So, we, and the, we are saying that the same thing works for A, A transpose. You can try your hands on it and you will see that what it works. So from here we happens to get back our original matrix. So we are saying how the second, looking at the second proof, we are saying the adjunct values of this matrix are real and non negative. And then the first one, since our matrix that we are dealing with is symmetric, then it implies that what the adjunct values that we are dealing with what our real numbers. So then we pose another condition that okay, suppose that V is a vector of is an adjunct vector of this matrix with with v being an, a unit vector such that the norm a unit vector with the norm norm two of it be equal to one and then the corresponding corresponding to the adjunct value or adjunct value which is lambda then we are saying that we can have zero we are dealing real numbers and numbers that are non-negative. So then, <coughs> the norm two of AV can be expressed as what AV transpose times the same AV, and this expression can be we can rewrite it in terms of this. And from here, we this expression is the same as what we have here. So, from Kalhermetist theorem, we understand that we can, since V is an adjunct vector, then we can write the whole of these expressions in terms of what? Lambda V. <coughs> and then from here, we just, since our lambda that we have here from equation 5, since the lambda is a scalar, we can factor it out, and then we have what? V transpose and V. And then V transpose V can be re we can rewrite it in terms of what, what lambda what 
V V lambda V nom nom two <clears throat> and then from there we know that we, from the condition that we have already put that the norm two of V is equal to one. So then we have our lambda which from here we are able to prove that our lambda is non negative real number. So we then look at this the third one. So with the third one we also have a condition that that our V is an agent vector corresponding to a non zero agent values of this very matrix that we have here. So we we said our V is the agent vector of this matrix that we have here. So from Kalhemetri's theorem again, we can have this term as really expressed in terms of as what well, lambda V, which also implies that <coughs> this matrix that we have here, this which is this very one here, also have what an agent vector. Okay. Which is what the agent vector is what A V. And then the whole term can be re-expressed in terms as this. So from here, we are saying that we, are, we want to post a condition from here. Now, if our <coughs> if our a v is equal to zero, then if the a v is equal to zero, then from here we are saying that if it's equal to zero, then it means our lambda is equal to zero from right from here. So if you multiply the whole thing, then it means the lambda is equal to zero, and then the vector that we are also dealing with is also equal to zero, because a lambda, every every lambda has its corresponding word, agent word vector. So if the agent vector is equal to zero, then it means what our lambda is equal to zero, which is it contradicts the assumption that our lambda should not be equal to zero. Then it implies that from here, from equation nine, it implies that our A V is it is not equal to what zero and then a v is the like i've said already a v is the agent vector of what this matrix that we have here a a transpose with its associated word lambda so from here we consider we want to look at how to do the singular value decomposition so consider, considering this matrix that we have seen here, that's five by three. We have the matrix we written here again, and it transpose to be equal to this. So A transpose A gives us this very matrix that we have seen here. And from there, we apply the Kalihemetis word theorem to arrive at the characteristics polynomial, which is equation 10. And Doing the factorization, we happen to get what equation, what 11. So from here, we know our agent values. When you create this one equal to zero, this equation 11 to equal to zero, we'll be getting what 5, 2, 3, 5, 2, and 1 as the agent values. And then from there, based on this information, we can now go ahead and then find our singular values. So from here, to get a singular value, singular value can be expressed as well. The root of, as we have seen here, <clears throat> so our S1 can be, is the root of lambda 1, which is for root 5, and our S2 is, is the root of lambda 2, and then that's root 2, and then the same as what equation was 17 so our singular value could decomposition for a as we have already said it that what the add the singular values were lies within the diagonals thus we have lambda 5 lambda 2 and i mean the square root of 5 square root of 2 and 1 so <clears throat> of which we need to rewrite the x to be to have the same dimension as our a so having obtained this three by three, we padding we we have padding it with zeros to give us what our five by three matrices. We have come to the end of this lesson, and if this video happens to be of help to you, 
please don't forget to subscribe like comment leave your com comment down below i'll i'll be interested to get more comments especially where with reference to the proof aspect thank you